Today we're meeting uh, in the Trade and Investment Business Breakfast um, and the purpose really is, is simple, is to really share trade and investment strategy and the, pre and the progress to date that we've made as Gauteng and Investment. Um, we also want to share with you uh, the, the commitment of Gauteng government um, and specifically under the leadership of MSC Maile, who's the MSC for Economic Development. The, the, our, our plans around Africa's growth and commitment. I think we want to also see this as a, as a gathering to create a space for reflection, but as, as well as uh, build um, and strengthen a uh, relationship with the media sector, because given the role that the media sector plays as being a critical conduit in terms of uh, information communication between government and the and the citizens of uh, Houghton. Um, in a few minutes, I'll be calling uh, Mr. Jamil uh, Chad, who is the CEO of uh, GGDA, which is currently hosting us, and he will explain to us where are we and why are we here. And then we will then call the MSC, MSC Maile for Economic Development, who will also be delivering the keynote address and particularly speaking on our where we are and what's the achievements have been made to date and why it's important for us to interact with um, stakeholders like you uh, this morning. And then our third speaker will be really talking about the state of investment in Gauteng uh, province. Perhaps two things that I need to say before we can start is that we're meeting in the midst of uh, Africa Month. Uh, I mean, South Africa is part of the Africa Month, and I think I would really like us to request that we have a, a small moment of silence in, um, in honoring uh, people who stood in against economic justice in Africa. But also the second thing is that we've seen a scourge of violence against women in South Africa, and I think we need to quietly say we denounce violence against women in South Africa as vulnerable citizens and who are protected by our constitution. I would just like to ask for just one um, second of moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I will now call upon uh, Mr. Jamil Chad to come and talk to us about the Investor Say GGDA and why we're here this morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pelissa. Um, good, good morning, uh, honored guests. Um, all protocol observed. Welcome, MEC, um, DGG Alfred Tau, to the session this morning. Uh, I think just in opening, I'd like to take the opportunity just to, to welcome you to, to the Gauteng Investment Center, um, the one-stop shop, the Invest SA Gauteng one-stop shop. Um, the one-stop shop is part of the Gauteng Growth and Development Agency. And as the program director indicated, I think my task this morning is just to kind of paint the context as to why are we here, what is it that we're hoping to do, um, and to spur some sort of discussion as to how do we take the province forward with regards to trade and investment. Um, from, a, from, a, uh, from a Gauteng perspective, um, the mandate for implementing strategic economic infrastructure and uh, promoting trade and investment lies with the Gauteng Growth and Development Agency. We are agency of the, of the province. We're 100% owned by government. Uh, and as such, all the facilitation services that we provide uh, to potential investors, uh, business people, the private sector, are actually done as part of the work that we do. Um, now, going back to the mandate of the Gauteng Growth and Development Agency, um, as I indicated, there are two specific mandates. The first is strategic economic infrastructure. And through that mandate, we basically try to see how we can stimulate growth within the economy uh, uh, targeted at certain specific priority uh, sector areas. Uh, and to do this, what we, what we do have within the Gauteng Growth and Development Agency are at least five different subsidiaries that operate uh, within specific sectors. Um, as an example, uh, we've got the Automotive Industry Development Corporation, which basically works a lot with the automotive OEMs out in Roslyn. Uh, we work very closely through the AIDC with um, companies like BMW, Nissan, uh, Ford. Uh, and by and large, I think over the last few years, um, we've seen increased investment coming from these three multinationals. Uh, a lot of it is because of the work that we actually put in 
in terms of building relationships, building programs in partnership with the automotive industry. We also have the Innovation Hub, which is located uh, in Centurion, um, just opposite the CSIR, next to the uh, University of Pretoria as well. And there we do a lot of innovation work. We do a lot of mentoring, coaching with entrepreneurs that operate within uh, the ICT sector, within the bio uh, medicine sector. Um, uh, and I think over the years, we've seen quite a bit of development coming out of there as well. And the aim there is really just to support some of the entrepreneurs that are operating within the innovation and entrepreneurship field. Uh, we also have the Gauteng IDZ company, which is probably the newest of the subsidiaries of the GGDA, uh, located out at the OR Tambo International Airport. Uh, we have a permit from the DTI to actually operate the IDZ as as a, as a IDZ, so it's an industrial development zone that comes with all the potential in, in incentives that investors are normally looking at. Um, the main objective there is to identify high value, low mass production. Um, and the idea is really to use OR Tambo as your uh, takeoff, um, to be able to export or at least manufacture high value goods locally and have them exported. So we're targeting the export market to, to a large extent. Um, currently, one of the first projects that we are working on is the development of a jewelry manufacturing precinct. And the idea there is really to ensure that beneficiation of gold, precious, uh, precious stones, actually takes place locally. Currently, our own research is showing, and I'm sure many of you will, will testify to this, that a lot of the jewelry that we wear is actually, um, the precious materials are local. They come from our mines, uh, but they're actually exported they come back as jewelry. We want to actually change that trajectory around where we can actually manufacture both for the local market and for the export market as well. Currently, one of the good news stories around the IDZ is that we've been able to attract a major international investor in the agro-processing industry already. So we're currently now putting, busy putting up the top structure to actually facilitate the production of um, products that will be exported from Gauteng to the rest of the world. Uh, we also have Con Hill, Constitution Hill. There, I think our focus is really around business tourism and around heritage um, uh, promotion and enhancement in a sense. Um, there's a few projects that we're currently running to see how we can build on the work that we've currently done at Con Hill as well. Um, the last subsidiary of, the, of, of GGDA with regards to the issues around strategic economic infrastructure is Con, uh, the Greater Newtown Precinct. Now, I'm not too sure how many of you have been through to Newtown recently, but over the last three, four years, there's probably been close on to two billion rand worth of private investment that has flowed into the Newtown area. Uh, and that is primarily because of the work that we had done historically um, by upgrading the precinct, uh, by building the Nelson Mandela Bridge that basically provided a, a sort of platform or at least a bridge between both literally and, and, and figuratively between Bramfontein and Newtown, but also the Cass Street off-ramp. And that, is, that access into Newtown has actually allowed and triggered private investors to basically say, look, this is a place where we can invest. And as a result, we've seen all the major investments take place there. Um, the second mandate of, of the GGDA is really the topic of why we are here today. It's about trade and investment. Um, as I indicated earlier on, our task is really to see how we are able to facilitate the investment of, um, of private sector institutions into the province. How do we attract them? How do we keep them happy? Um, how do we support them in whatever uh, expansion ventures that they have? Uh, and as such, I think the, the, there's a unit within the, the Gauteng, uh, within GGDA, that's specifically designed to basically do that as well. Um, a lot of the work that we do actually centers around the center that you, you're currently sitting in. This is a one-stop shop. Uh, in fact, uh, I can go as far as to say that the one-stop shop, um, a, as we see it now, was actually piloted by the Gauteng Growth and Development Agency. Um, it's now that I think DTI has basically come in to see how they could replicate what we, do, what we have done here. And the idea with the one-stop shop is really to ensure that a potential investor doesn't have to be knocking on 15 different doors to actually find any information. Uh, we have entered into partnerships with 
most of government agencies, parastatals, municipalities, uh, national departments, who a potential investor may have the need to actually engage with. And what this means is that when an investor knocks on our door, we assign a facilitator, investment facilitator to him, and that investment facilitator will ensure that if the investor needs to register a company, um, to engage with home affairs around uh, work permits, uh, visas, uh, whether we need to identify land within a particular municipality, whether we need to work towards uh, imp uh, impact assessment studies, uh, whether we need to get rezoning certificates done, all of that is done right here. Um, and you don't need to actually go to, to, um, all, to all the different entities. And I think that has basically helped us um, deal with two major issues when it comes to building confidence in investment. And the one is really around cutting red tape, which we are able to do via the one-stop shop. The other is around reducing the cost of doing business. Uh, we often find that investors come in uh, because they don't know the setup of, of the institutions within the country, often go to consultancies to basically help them do it, uh, what, what it is that we are doing here. Uh, we offer that service to investors free of charge. Um, you come in, we basically un try and understand exactly where the, the blockage is, um, where, where the stoppages are, and see how we can work around that. And I think over the past, uh, past few years, we've been able to do that quite significantly. Uh, just to give you a sense, I mean, on, on average, we have over three, three and a half thousand um, queries that, that come through the, the investment center on, on an annual basis, which means that we're dealing with just over 300 or so uh, queries and potential investor inquiries on, on a monthly basis. Um, the, the vast majority of those are actually resolved via the partnerships that, that we facilitate as well. Um, but that's, that's around what, what it is that the, 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 the Houting One Stop Shop does here. Um, there's a lot of work that we do around export development as well. Um, we know that Gauteng is the manufacturing heart of, of, of South Africa and I think by and large of, 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 uh, of the continent as well. What we also know is that over the last decade or two, we've seen a kind of decline and a move away from traditional manufacturing. I think you'd know that historically gold was the core of what Gauteng was about and hence even Igoli, the name comes from, from gold. Um, we've seen that slowly because of global the global situation, we've seen the demand for gold and gold products diminish to, to some extent. And what we are trying to do now is to see how do we begin to, to fill that gap. Um, and one of the things that we are looking at is ensuring that companies that are manufacturing are able to be supported with whatever means they require to ensure that they not only continue manufacturing but are also able to um, export into Africa and into the rest of the world. There's a few programs that we run within um, the Trade and Investment Division where we actually work with the DTI to actually train uh, companies in export development, in accessing export markets as well. And we've seen uh, a huge jump. So for example, in, in the last financial year, which just ended now in March, uh, at the end of March 20, uh, 2018, we've been able to facilitate just over a billion rand worth of trade that has walked through the doors of the of the GGDA, um, from a from a uh, from an investment facilitation point of view, we we're probably looking at just just around three four billion rand worth of investment as well, and that's investment that we have physically had a hand in ensuring that 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 occurs as well. So, colleagues, I think just with those few words of of introduction, um, uh, I hope I've kind of painted a picture as to what it is that the Gauteng development agency does, the work that we do. Um, I think later on in the presentation, um, you'll get a bit more detail as to what exactly is the full landscape of investment opportunities in, in, in Gauteng as well. Uh, and I think we'll be able to engage further on that. So with those few words, Program Director, thank you. <coughs> Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jamil, for that detailed account of um, the role of uh, GDDA and how it facilitates trade and investment in Gauteng, but as well as um, 
um, its role in ensuring that it removes the uh, red tape because we know that often that's always one of the complaints we receive from investors that uh, uh, in South Africa and in Gauteng there's a lot of red tape and I think uh, Jamil has kind of like institutionally outlined in terms of what is it that they've done or and they are doing as, a, as an organization to ensure that uh, they remove the red tape. Now we will call um, our keynote uh, speaker which is um, MSC Mayile, uh, who is the MSC for Economic Development, Environment, Agriculture, Rural and Rural Development. Welcome, MSC. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Uh, let me <coughs> start by thanking everyone for joining us uh, this morning as the Gauteng Provincial Government. Um, <coughs> We think it's important that we must uh, continue to engage with the different uh, sectors and different um, stakeholders in our province and in our country if we want to uh, make progress. So today is the beginning, I mean, is the continuation of the engagements we have always had with the different uh, stakeholders in our province. So a warm, warm welcome to all of you to this trade and investment breakfast. And as part of uh, <coughs> government's drive to promote domestic and foreign direct uh, investment in our economy in order to promote and stimulate economic growth and development with the aim of improving the quality of life and living conditions of our people. This is all in line with the call made by President Ramaphosa that as a country we should endeavor to attract uh, more than 1.2 trillion uh, worth of investment. And uh, by default, because of uh, how we are located, or rather where we are located, Gauteng um, has a huge role to play because we all know that uh, at least 40% uh, of uh, industrial activities are taking place, 40% um, plus of uh, total number of people employed are here in Gauteng. We know the significant uh, uh, capacity of the economy and therefore <coughs> we understand that uh, we have to play that responsibility and that's why we must have engagements like these ones to share ideas on how best can we um, um, fast track this uh, process as, as Gauteng. Um, in 2017, South Africa attracted foreign direct investment to the tune of um, 3.2 billion US dollars, a figure which is low by historical standards as the country saw lower foreign portfolio investments when compared to other emerging markets. A travesty, as statistics tells us, that half of the top 10 countries attracting foreign direct investment are developing economies. So, Program Director, in 2018, with the advent of the new dawn under the leadership of President Ramaphosa, South Africa has experienced, and I'm sure we'll all agree, improved business and investor confidence with the uh, country having been identified as the key emerging market for 2018 and beyond. There is evidence of significant foreign investor interest in the country, stemming from the uh, raised hopes of higher economic growth, restoration of good governance within state-owned entities <coughs> and public uh, finances, amongst other things. The picture with domestic investor investors is equally as positive. So from Gauteng City Region perspective, between January 2011 and December 2016, the provincial economy attracted a total of 460 foreign direct investment projects worth about 150 billion. As a provincial government, we are doing everything within our power to promote Gauteng as an investment destination of choice and facilitate export-led growth. It is um, one of the reasons why we have this uh, facility, as it was explained earlier on by the acting CEO. So this uh, facility 
uh, it's part of uh, uh, our drive to reduce the cost of doing business in Gauteng, as well as improving the ease of doing by reducing transit times and transaction costs, as well as red tape for both domestic and foreign investors. And I know that uh, often um, uh, we speak about red tape and that it must be reduced, but the question is how should we reduce it and what constitutes red tape? Uh, because if we don't answer those questions, we'll continuously talk about uh, red tape. And there are uh, various measures we have introduced as the Gauteng Provincial Government. The first thing we did was to um, put together a, a team led by a MEC for uh, Human Settlement and Corporate Governance to deal with, with red tape. So, so that's the first measure. But the second measure we introduced was to, is to constantly uh, conduct a study on the cost and ease of doing business in Gaudet. Uh, one, the next study will be released in the next month or so, which then gives us an indication as provincial government on where are the uh, challenges and what needs to be done. Uh, the, th the third thing, amongst others, was to look at the, um, the process of dealing with uh, uh, environmental impact, uh, uh, what is called EIA, yes, assessments. As you know, it used to take about 24 months, um, and now it takes uh, at least, uh, no, three months, at least three months. We are still not happy even with that three months um, because we want to reduce it to at least uh, a month so that people who want to invest in the economy, they don't have to wait for long. And one of the things we did was to introduce there's a mechanism uh, we, we have introduced which, which, which is allowed by law with the concurrence of the Minister of Environment. Um, we pre-approve uh, the EIA process uh, because one of the things that has been happening, there's been development that has been taking place and the, that development has not been deliberate, it has not been part of our um, a special, um, uh, special strategy or framework. So we've got a special framework of the province, we know what we want to do, where and all that. So as a result, we are able to pre-approve uh, EIAs for those areas. If you come as an investor, whether domestic or foreign, you want to invest, it could even take you uh, 10 days to get the approval because we've already pre-approved doing certain things. So these are some of the measures that we are um, employing. And then you've got people who are doing business with the provincial, with, with government, uh, provincial, national, local, and they, they always complain that government does not pay them on time. Um, uh, and in certain instances, government does not um, pay at all. So those uh, who are paid on time at least, but there are instances where government does not pay at all. So there are various measures we've put. One of them is that all provincial government departments will pay their service providers within 15 days. And, and the only departments that pay in 10 days are the ones that are led by me, economic development and agriculture, because we must, uh, we must lead. And our agencies, if it happens that you do business with one of our agencies, they will pay you within 48 hours, because we are, it's possible. <laughs> I can see you are saying, ah, no, it is possible. <laughs> so, uh, the other day the deputy president was talking about paying people in 10 days, and somebody said, you know, it's populist and all that. It's happening here in Gauteng. So, it is possible. Uh, as they always say, where there is a, a will, there's a way. So you've got the political will on our part. But we are also aware uh, of um, instances where there's corruption. And it, it, it makes uh, doing business with government very difficult. So even there, we have put various measures. Uh, one of the measures we put was to firstly adopt um, a a strategy to deal with uh, uh, issues of ethics, morals. The second thing was to appoint an, a civil society 
uh, team that will advise government on ethics. This is important because these are people who are not in government. These are professionals, people of uh, integrity who are, who are there. I think the former uh, Auditor General is there, Mr. Nombembe. I think, he, I think he chairs that committee. So that's important because these are people who are able to say to government, we think you are not uh, doing things right. We think this is what you must do and all that. Because often we talk about corruption, but we don't want people to uh, look at the measures that we have and, and critique them. So that's, that's another measure. But the second measure we've uh, put in place um, was to subject all our tenders to what we call a public tendering process. Uh, and, 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 and you'll ask, what is that? Because all tenders are advertised publicly. The difference with this is that members of the public firstly are allowed to um, <clears throat> look at the processes, those who've got interest. But secondly, you've got probity auditors. Um, these are external auditors who audit the process from beginning to end uh, to ensure that there is a credibility. We, 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 we have been piloting this for the last two years. We have now taken a decision that we are going to legislate uh, so that even if we are not there, you know the problem with the political parties and politicians is that when another political party comes, it doesn't matter how good the program or policies are, uh, because it was not done by us, we must do away with it. But this is one instance where we want to make sure that even if we are not around, those who come after us should find it very difficult to uh, uh, do away with that. So we are, we are legislating it so that it becomes, uh, because once we can deal with that and, and, and ensure that there's credibility in our processes, we'll be able to deal with a lot of issues, including service delivery. You'll never have uh, issues where somebody who's not qualified will be appointed to build bridges, build houses, build roads. Because, uh, and you'll also have less instances of irregularity in government. Um, and as a result, our audit outcomes have uh, increased significantly uh, since we've introduced uh, this measure. So going forward, it will help us to even deal with the issues of um, uh, 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 audit. And, and we are also working with the uh, uh, different spheres of government. As you know, there are things that um, we cannot do um, because it's not our competence. And, and, and there is one of the significant things about this center is that uh, when you come here, you'll find all municipalities, the big municipalities of Gauteng, Guruleni, Johannesburg, Tswani. You want to apply for um, an EIA, the Department of Environment, it's here. They will help you fast track the process. You want to register a company, you do it within a day here. So, so you don't have to be going around looking for this and that and all that. So that is one of the reasons. And this is not just for foreign investors, even the local investors. But don't, don't bring a small project uh, uh, that you can do. I mean, we want, we want big, big, impactful uh, activities so that we can be able to change our economy. We know the challenges of the last uh, few years have taken us back as a country. So we have to recover and move uh, even faster. So we are uh, uh, trying our level best, but also we are having a, an economic development strategy for the province. And it, 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 is, it is sector focused. Uh, we are focusing on uh, certain sectors and those sectors, uh, amongst other things, will include uh, construction, will include the pharmaceuticals, uh, transport, will include um, uh, uh, ICT, uh, BPO, etc., etc. So, we 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 also want to make sure that um, we work with leaders in specific sector, sectors, because we understand that each sector has got its own unique challenges. Um, so, those who are in the automotive, for instance, will have a specific set. I mean, uh, challenges. And some of those challenges might be um, as a result of challenges in the steel industry, for instance. So how do we work with them together with national government to solve those issues? That's what uh, 
we are doing but i won't bore you with those details today because i would want us to uh, engage but the other significant thing is that we've got a 15 year infrastructure master plan and that master plan has got bankable projects worth uh, more than 150 billion us dollars um so this is an opportunity for both domestic and foreign uh, investors who are interested to look at those projects and interest uh, and, and, and invest and that's why we are also excited that um, in in november from the 7th to the 9th we will be hosting what the premier calls the davos of africa which is the africa's investment forum uh, it was announced by the premier and the president of the african development bank uh, is the first of its kind and what is good about it is that um, um, you've got uh, the World Bank and the IMF coming and partnering with the Development Bank of Africa. But they've also committed themselves that they don't want a lot of speeches uh, in that forum. It must be about deal making. So if you are not an entrepreneur or a business person, uh, you can't go there uh, because they don't want to be listening to speeches and analysis they want to be making deals so that's how it's going to be structured and someone was asking me how is that going to be possible uh, so we'll see now in november how it will be done but i, c I can imagine that there will also be matchmaking there and uh, appointments in advance for those who will be going but this is an opportunity because that is a strategic um, uh, instrument for development in the continent which we have not utilized uh, Effectively, and I was glad because there are um, South African companies that have been uh, funded by the African Development Bank to do development in other uh, 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 what is it in other countries. So we we are very much uh, excited, and we, uh, we 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 believe that we are uh, a, a responsible, a responsive. Uh, government and we are clear about the trajectory that we want to uh, follow and we are also committed and we're doing our level best uh, that is why we want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have shown interest in our efforts and we look forward to engaging with you in a sustainable uh, manner uh, i think the next presenter will be able to give it a complete uh, picture um, we were just doing introductory remarks to the main uh, speech. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, um, MSC, for that. Um, and I think the, the critical issue that MSC outlines in his input is that Gauteng government in the last three and a half years has been committed to ensuring that it clears or it addresses what you call government failures. But I think the key lesson out of that is so what is it that the private sector is doing to ensure that it corrects its own market failures? So in essence, if public sector is committed to actually ensure that it removes bottlenecks and it corrects government failures, but you then need a, com a concomitant a commitment from private sector to make it sure that it actually corrects its market failures so that whenever there's requirement for investment, we don't struggle, but also we're able to find a common ground with each other. All right, and that leads me to the next speaker, which is uh, Mr. Alfred Tau, who will then be reflecting on the state of trade and investment. In fact, state of investment uh, in Gauteng. And I'm putting up his uh, presentation already. Ladies and gentlemen, Dumelang, I have a relatively short presentation to sh share with you. And as the program director says, the, the real focus is to look at uh, some elements of uh, the province's investment performance uh, with a, a much special focus on FDI. You know, there are, there are many other things we want to look at. Uh, but this is just the, the outline of this and I'll be as brief as possible so that uh, we don't waste much of your time here. So what I'm going to present, as I just said, 
it's just a summary of the province's investment performance, but with a special focus on FDI and a bit of the public investment, especially with uh, respect to infrastructure. Uh, and obviously this is a part of ongoing work uh, that we, we will continue uh, over time. And in as much as we get more intelligence, more information, more impact out of that, I'm sure the MEC will be willing to share that uh, with yourselves. Uh, I'm probably speaking to the converted, but we all understand why governments spend a lot of time tracking and monitoring investments in all its forms. But the, the one thing I just want to highlight is that obviously the nature of investments we get from upfront will tell you the type of growth you're going to get, the type of jobs, the type of development you're going to get as a country or region. So the sooner we understand the behavior of investments, the pattern, the more we can anticipate the outcomes of this and therefore plan appropriately. Uh, another point, obviously, is that we do need to, out of all the volumes and volumes of investments, we, need, we do need to identify what is the most strategic for governments to really spend its time on. Uh, what are those high impact projects that you want uh, the Premier, the MBC and their teams to really focus their attention on because the other things may be happening on their own. And lastly, it's that obviously understanding uh, investments empowers policy makers to come up with appropriate industrial policies and investment policies to ensure that the impact of uh, this investment are maximized for the greater good. Now, just a bit of methodology. We are covering a specific period here, uh, 2015 to 2017. And we basically looked at FDI and public infrastructure investments. And a greater deal of this, uh, even though we do have agencies at national, provincial, and local, they do track this investment, a greater deal of this is what comes out of the FDI uh, markets uh, publication. But obviously our agencies are contributing. Now we, we do understand that uh, there are issues that we need to deal with on data. Uh, for various reasons, uh, we do need to ensure that the kind of indicators that are being tracked with respect to investments are common across the board whoever is tracing them so that it becomes easy to compare, to check, to validate, and ensure that we are all looking at uh, the, the right things. We have not yet looked at all the completed our work on domestic direct investments. And obviously they understand that that is a, a bigger chunk of what we need to look at. Now, this is just the, the summary uh, according to FDI magazine. And, and as I said, this is the uh, private FDI. As you can see here, 2015, we've had a total of 12.8 billion. Uh, that was recorded by FDI markets for for Gauteng, not South Africa, for Gauteng. And that's, we've just broken down uh, this uh, investments into both tertiary, primary, secondary, and, and services. And you can see that in 2016, that moved from 12.8 billion to 38.8 billion, uh, with the bulk of that coming from services. In 2017, there was a drop 
from 38.8 billion to 21.1 billion, but still the bulk of that being services. And overall, just over this three years, we have had 72.7 billion. Now, do understand that we are aware there are a number of projects that have not been captured here, investment projects. And we will work on capturing those. Now, this is just a graphic representation of that information. As you can see, the services sector give us 75% of FDI in the province, and manufacturing 19%, the remainder, uh, the primary sectors. And now here we wanted to look at where are this, what is the sectoral or product distribution of this? And I don't have to dwell much on this. Uh, you can see this breakdown in here. You have a range from, this is the primary sector, cement, fruits and vegetables, grains, steel products, aluminum, and related. Uh, on the secondary subsectors, you can see that, I mean, this is quite a diverse group. Uh, from aerospace, auto components, OEM investments, chemicals, uh, electronic components, I'm just looking at the most significant ones, industrial machinery, equipment, and tools. And when it comes to the tertiary or services industries, you can see quite also a broad sp uh, spread from creative industries, energy, financial services, life sciences, physical sciences, professional services, retail, trade, tourism, transport, and uh, the transport sector. Now the next slide speaks to the regional spread. Uh, the province is organized administratively into five regions or corridors. Now what you can see here is that uh, the, the central region, which is the Johannesburg, it's a London region, accounts for the bulk of this uh, investments. And with very little going to the Eastern Corridor, which is Ekuruleni, and the Southern Corridor, Sidi Beng, and a sizable chunk going to the Northern Corridor. Now, what you don't see here is the West Rand. Now, obviously, this doesn't mean that nothing happened in the West Rand. What it means that is, is that the significance of those investments will not be able to show up on a map uh, if you had to plot them down. Now, obviously, that's a, an important policy and uh, strategy issue that we do need to pay attention to. Then we wanted to understand where are these investments coming from. Uh, and this is the, uh, the results of what we got. The interesting thing here for me is that we know that China has been a major investor in South Africa. Okay. But it doesn't come out big in Gauteng. So obviously that's also another policy strategy issue that because we know the the willingness and readiness of the Chinese to invest in, in South Africa, that we need to do something to tap into a, an open investment source for the country. Uh, the key emerging issues, what we can see it's what we already know. The economy of this province is predominantly services. Now the key question therefore is, what is it that we will have to do to enhance those investments in, in services, get more and more of this? Um, 
and as well as how do we strengthen manufacturing because by and large the growth of services is then cut by the growth of manufacturing even if that is smaller but whatever you get in manufacturing you get a lot that there's a lot of work that we need to do here we know many of the world's city regions are doing quite well in in positioning themselves especially around services you just think about what dubai is doing to reposition itself as a not just as a transport hub now a global transport hub but as a significant center for medical services at, at knowledge so that there's a lot of things that we will learn from the other regions the other important issue that's coming out is that we will have to do a lot more work to support the lagging regions in the province both Sidibeng and West Rand but that doesn't mean we don't focus on improving even the performance of the leading uh, regions simply means that some more work needs to be done to support those that are lagging behind uh, and one of those that the team has been looking at is how do we develop regional value chains even across the province but obviously that implies across South Africa there are things that we can do better in Gauteng when another province uh, just plays its part in that value chain so we'll, we'll look at those and, and obviously there's some work that we need to, to improve on in terms of integration of the investment facilitation the, the CEO has already indicated the work that this one stop center is, uh, is doing to ensure that but clearly there's a, a lot more work that we need to do across uh, the, the spheres of government to ensure integration. The, the, the work on public investment is much shorter, so uh, I, I will finish soon. Uh, but we, we do know the role of public investments in just creating an enabling environment for investments and also for the private sector to thrive in, in general. And, and, and the key part of that is integrated planning and execution of this investment. So, so what we have seen here is that this is the, some of the planned public investments in a whole range of economic infrastructure projects. Uh, so we, we have looked at what was planned and what has actually uh, uh, taken place what what has happened with those plans and and unfortunately what we see is just a huge gap between what is planned and the execution of those plans uh, you can still see here that the the lagging regions are still an issue even though uh, our work suggests that some more work needs to be done in Ekuruleni. And this is just an indication that much of many of the public investment projects stay in the planning stage for quite a necessarily long time. Uh, then we wanted to look at the nature of those whether it's brown fields versus uh, green fields and you can see that uh, we do get a lot of uh, green field investments uh, which is about 35 of them and a significant chunk of brown field investments uh, I'm sure that this, this doesn't really have significant policy issues except the, the, the key message being that let's just go ahead and do what we need to do. Now with respect to public investments, uh, a greater focus has to be on unlocking 
uh, those plant investments, take them from just being plants uh, to execution. And that involves looking at fi uh, core investments with the private sector, and probably some may argue even looking at spaces for the private sector to execute those investments. Uh, there's work that needs to be done to improve the procurement processes uh, around those, and in, uh, as I indicated earlier on, integrated project planning, development and management capacity. Now, this is my last slide on things that we need to do going forward. Overall, we recognize that there's a chunk of work that we have to do that relates to data and reporting issues. Uh, in the main, that relates to standardization of indicators, time frames, uh, and, and reporting formats. Obviously, even though if, if we were to look at South Africa, we would all agree that Gauteng is doing well in terms of investments. However, if we look at other city regions in the world, there's clearly a lot of work for us to do. We need to upscale our work on investment promotion facilitation do more work to come up with strategic uh, projects, go globally to aggressively market uh, these uh, opportunities. And we obviously do need to look at the most strategic and uh, projects which have significant high impact. Uh, you will all rea realize, you probably know, I, I haven't done looked at this, that. Uh, if, if Nando's has opened 10 restaurants in Gauteng over the last year, you're probably looking at least at a minimum of 2 million worth of investments per, per outlet. Uh, I'm being conservative, yeah. Now, just imagine the volume of those investments. But that really doesn't need government to be chasing those because they happen but it's quite huge investments if you look at all what is happening with nando's kfc mcdonald's and all of those things so there are huge investments that are happening out there they can happen on their own and i'm not even talking about other specialized restaurants that are just happening on on their own however there are those investments that government needs to chase uh, because they have significantly even higher impact uh, and would not necessarily happen on their own. And I think this, this issue keeps coming again, public investment, strength and planning and execution capacity, even looking at partnerships beyond government. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, my name is Muzi Matema. I'm the group executive in charge of uh, trade and investment in the GGTA. I have been uh, tasked with uh, asking you to leave this uh, morning. <laughs> but before I say that, I think it's necessary that we, we summarize some of the discussions that we've had today. Um, but to touch contextually where we find ourselves as, a, as an economy, last year in October, the IMF projected uh, the South African economy to grow an average of 0.9% for the next three years. A few weeks ago in April, that figure had been revised to 1.7%, uh, which means the conditions for, for yield and FDI are ripe and becoming riper every day. But we are bound here by uh, the search for yield, as yourselves in the capital formation sector, and ourselves in the public sector who search a social economic yield for our people. And if I could put a thread across all the conversations that were raised today is the need for, for synergy. And I think uh, with that synergy and in light of the 100 US billion that our president has asked us to find in foreign direct uh, investment, we can, we can uh, certainly achieve uh, some of those targets. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for, for gracing us today. Uh, MEC, in your, in your presentation at the Township Awards this weekend, uh, you raised the issue of uh, 
where can we get capital to facilitate some of these projects? Uh, let me see, they are here. The signal is clear. <laughs> um, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. As I say, this is the dawn and the beginning of further interaction between ourselves in the public space and yourselves in the private sector. Thank you so much.